Good afternoon, Nationals fans. Hello to all of you here with us, and to those watching at home on Masson and listening on 106.7 The Fan. I'm Dan Colco, and I want to welcome all of you to Ryan Zimmerman Day here at Nationals Park. was coming for quite some time. This thing didn't sneak up on us. So without further ado, let's introduce some of today's luminaries and special guests. First, please welcome Nationals founding principal owner, Ted and Annette Lerner. <laughs> Nationals managing principal owner, Mark Lerner and his wife, Judy. Marlo Lerner Tannenbaum and Bob Tannenbaum, Deborah and Ed Cohen, and Alan and Roxanne Gottlieb. Nationals President of Baseball Operations and General Manager Mike Rizzo is here, representing the Club's front office. And Nationals Manager Davey Martinez has taken the Ryan's wife Heather and their children Mackenzie, Hayden, Henry, and Benjamin are also here on the stage. Also here are Ryan's dad Keith and mom Cheryl, his brother Sean and wife Andrea, and Heather's family as well. They're joined by some of Ryan's childhood friends and other special guests from throughout the years. I thought they were booing. Sneak attack here from Juan Soto and Sean Doodle. Appreciate you guys. Dirty feet. Now we're excited to welcome some of Ryan's former Nationals teammates from the dugout to the stage. Just as Ryan grew into his role as a clubhouse leader late in his career, this former big league catcher served as a veteran presence when Ryan first came up to the big leagues. Please welcome Ryan Schneider. I like how they have the player, the player thing. This right-handed pitcher celebrated Ryan's 30th birthday by throwing the first no-hitter in Nationals history. They may disagree on how to spell their last names. We were there. To this day, Jordan Zimmerman. Yeah. That is not a little late, but he'll be joining us. The 2011 season was a big leap forward for the Nationals as they finished the year strong and set up the winning seasons to come. This teammate and close friend of Ryan's was a big part of that effort. Give a round of applause for Lance Nix. Yeah! One of the top players in Nationals history. This man won three consecutive silver sluggers. He had three 2020 seasons for the Nationals. And he's also one of the great clubhouse leaders in the Ryan's good buddies on the Nationals 
for four seasons. This left-handed hitting first baseman won a gold glove, silver slugger, and finished sixth in the 2012 MVP race. Please welcome back Adam LaRoche. So, um, you know, I'll never forget it. 
in all of my sportscasting career, I love covering players like you because it was never about you. Heavens, the first draft choice of the Washington Nationals franchise, you've played in more games, you've scored more runs, you've hit more home runs, you've simply done it all. Hey, Rhino, I just want to send my congratulations. No one is more deserving. From the moment I walked in that Nationals Club clubhouse in 2012, everyone knew who the guy was, right? You are everything that's right in the game. You are everything that is right when a franchise drafts a player. Congratulations on your amazing career. As an avid baseball fan, thank you so much for the joy and excitement you brought me during your 16 years with the Nats. Your feats on and off the field have been extraordinary. Hi, Ryan. Grab the set here. Can't believe it. Instagram. <laughs> you did it. 
World Series champion. All the awards, All-Star Games, Gold Glove, Silver Sluggers, Comeback Player of the Year. All the walk-offs, and today, your number retired. You did it. Heather and the kids, your family and friends, teammates past and present, your city, all here. Because in one way or another, you've managed to leave your signature on all of our lives. For years, you've led us all, without yelling or beating your chest, silently, consistently handling your business, with grace, and grit, and integrity, with class. If at any point from today to 100 years from today, there were a question regarding the Nationals' way, they'd be well off to look back at this stone, the cornerstone. It could be fine like this, a stone representing the nominal starting place and the construction of a monumental building. Said another way, the chief foundation on which something is constructed or developed. There could be no mistaking, this stone is you. More than half your life has been spent in Nationals uniform. To the ups and the downs, even the one to bring it all back to level. You've dedicated your time, energy, and focus on being the best you can be for this organization. Not only on the field and in the clubhouse, but in the community too. Hundreds of appearances, countless hours interacting with fans, and most impressively, the Zims Foundation. And although you've made it look effortless, everyone who knows you knows how much sacrifice it's taken. So, on behalf of everyone here, thank you. I'm grateful to be a part of this celebration. But even more grateful that we got to be teammates and become friends. Congratulations, buddy. You did it. Thank you, Desi.
Now let's welcome to the podium, Mike Rizzo and Davey Martinez. Well, first of all, it's such an honor to be involved in the Rhine Zone weekend. Uh, I met Zim 16 years ago when I became a Washington National, and the, the stories and the, and the things that were heard about Zim throughout the league were immense. You're talking about a quiet leader, a humble superstar, a guy who always cared about the name on the front of the jersey more than the name on the back. Always a leader by example. Not only with his performance between the white lines, but his attitude in friendships, in the clubhouse, in the community. The things that were said and were unsaid. The captain. Mr. National. Sim, it's been my honor to be associated with you for 16 years and enjoy the day. Congratulations to all the fans, to the Zimmerman family, to the Lerner family, and to the fellow players. What a great weekend to cap off a superb career. Yeah. Like there was no I say, I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> First thing first, there was no exception on the field last night. It won't be fair if I could thank Heather and the whole entire Zimmerman family for sharing Ryan for so many years with all of us. <laughs> yeah. Ryan and I spent so many nights after games kind of reminiscing about different things and life and, and, and players and um, what he doesn't realize is he was important to me because he kept me grounded. He was the constant professional. We'd often sit, sit around sipping some Sprite. Sprite. And he'd come in my office and ask me, how am I doing? Are you okay? I don't know how you do it. You're calm every day. And I never told them, but I'm gonna tell them now. You need to look in the mirror. You're the calm one. You're the one that makes people relax. You are the constant professional. Every day, day in, day out. And it's an honor for me to stand up here tonight talk about you, Ryan Zimmerman. You're truly amazing. Not only on the field, off the field. I love you. I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad to be honored to stand here and talk about you. He is Mr. National. I talk about you on one and out every day, winning your day. Ryan Zimmerman won his day, and today he is going one and out. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Riz. Thank you, Dave. Mark Lerner also has a few words to share, as well as a special announcement.
Mr. National, or as he started to call himself recently, employee number 11. Ryan, your accolades on the field speak for themselves. A two-time All-Star, a Gold Glove, two Silver Sluggers, numerous franchise records, and a 2019 World Series champion. Over the years, you have given us so many memorable moments that have shaped and solidified your legacy as Mr. National. Who can forget your first walk off against the Yankees on Father's Day in 2006 at RFK Stadium? Or your walk off in the inaugural game here at Nationals Park against the Braves in 2008? For that incredible dive and catch you made in game one of the 2019 National League Championship Series that was awesome. against the Cardinals. <laughs> like most of you, I could stand here all afternoon and name many other phenomenal moments. There are plenty of funny moments also. <laughs> My wife Judy was sitting next to Ryan's wonderful mom, Cheryl, at a game at RFK very early in Ryan's career. Cheryl was intently watching Ryan at bat. He unfortunately struck out. After reading Ryan's lips during the instant replay, Cheryl got very upset. <laughs> she told Judy that Ryan had used a few inappropriate words after the swinging swipe, strike three, and that Ryan would get an earful from her after the game. <laughs> Even a major leaguer can still hear from his mom. <laughs> we have all had the pleasure of watching you grow and evolve not only as a player, but as a person. Your quiet leadership in the clubhouse and on the field and your commitment to the DMV community helped not only set an example for players who came after you, but it helped shape the culture of this franchise. It was truly an honor to have you in a Washington Nationals jersey for the last 16 seasons. And it is only fitting that no one else in the history of the Washington Nationals, will ever wear your number. So without further ado, it is my distinct pleasure to officially announce the retirement of number 11. Wait, what? Ryan, give it back. He's wearing a suit and tie on there.
thank you for spending your entire career with us and for playing such an integral role in shaping this organization. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Mark. Now, fans, please turn your attention to the third level overlooking first base for the moment you've been waiting for. One more time. Aww. 
He's a legend. Mr. Walkoff. Mr. Nash. He is. Ryan Zimmerman. Ryan Zimmerman. Ryan Zimmerman. <laughs> Number 11. Ryan Zimmerman. Told me the truth. 
which is hard to find these days. Sometimes it wasn't what I wanted to hear, but you never lied to me. It was so much fun to be a part of building a championship team with you. Harold Cardoza, who has been basically the team dom and sort of my DC baseball mom for almost 20 years. Thank you for helping me, all my teammates, everyone involved in the organization with so many things on and off the field. You helped me from the time I was a single 21 year old and now a married man with lots of kids. <laughs> you always had the answers and somehow you always had the time to help everyone. To all of my managers, and I had a lot of them. <laughs> from my very first Mr. Frank Robinson. Who I think is one of the most impressive human beings I've ever met. To my last, Davey. And Jim Wiggins. Who is one of the most versatile people I've ever met. You handled every situation with class, and you truly care about your players more than anyone I've ever been around. Every single manager that I had, Frank, Davey, all of them, taught me something on and off the field. Lots of things, more than one thing, that helped me get to this point. So thank you guys. Thank all of you who took time out to manage. To all the coaches, the people who do all the work, while well, people like him get all the credit. <laughs> Your commitment to making me a better player every day will never be forgotten. You all sacrifice time with your families, nine, ten months out of the year, to teach a game that we all love. You help me become a more complete player than I would not have had the career I had without all of you. Thank you. <laughs> the numerous medical team that helped me stay on the field. I gave you a run for your money. <laughs> there were days where I really wasn't sure how the heck you got me out there, but you did. And in baseball, you have to play every day. That's how you earn respect. And there's no way I could have done that without all of you guys. Clubhouse staff. You were the first ones there every day, and the last ones to leave. When we get back from a road trip early in the morning, or arrive somewhere late at night, you guys still work. I always joked, you had to take care of 25 to 30 prima donna athletes and keep them happy on a daily basis. No thanks. <laughs> Rob McDonald, Mike Wallace, Dan Juan, Andrew Melnick, Greg Melnick, Ryan Weeby, Mike Gordon, Rosie, and many, many more. Thank you all for taking care of me and my family. You guys are the backbone of this team. <laughs> to all of my teammates, from high school all the way to the big leagues, you were what I miss most about the game. It was so much fun to get to know, get to know so many different people from all over the world. I learned so much and became such a better person because each and every one of you. We pushed each other to the limit every day, all while trying to achieve the same goal. Some days and some years went better than others, but we are all part of a special fraternity that not many can say they're a part of. Don't ever forget that and don't take it for granted. Enjoy every second of it, because it goes pretty darn fast. <laughs> to my agents in CAA, Brody Van Wagner, Jeff Berry, Tom Hagee, Sean Twitty, Matt Ricardo, Jen Brazil, Terry Prince, and John Paguda, and lots more. Thank you for 20 years of uncompromised excellence. You kept every promise you told me at the beginning, and that's saying something for agents. You were honest, and you equipped me and my family with all the information we needed to make many very important life decisions during my career. We achieved so much together, but importantly, more importantly, we had a lot of fun doing it. 
Thank you. To my beautiful wife, Heather. There is no way I could have done this out here. It truly is amazing how positive, energetic, caring, and selfless you are every single day. It is infectious, and you make everyone else around you a better person. Being home every day now makes it even more impressive. <laughs> you definitely have the hardest job in the world. There is nobody else I would want to go on this ride with, and I'm so excited for the future. I love you. <laughs> to my kids, Mackenzie, Hayden, Henry, and Benjamin, thank you for showing me that baseball is not the most important thing in the world. I am so grateful that I will be able to be around to watch you grow and be a part of whatever you end up being passionate about. Just remember, if you work hard, treat people like you want to be treated, and make good decisions, you can do anything you want. I love you. <laughs> to Heather's parents, Bob and Ollie, and her sister Lindsay, and her husband Frank, I'm so lucky to have such a great family unit. You guys have helped me and Heather so much over the years with the kids and many other things. There's no doubt in my mind that we couldn't have done this without your guys' help. Thank you. <laughs> to my parents, Keith and Cheryl. You guys made it possible for me to be here today. All your sacrifice, hard work, patience, leadership, love, and so much more left a lasting impact on me from the very beginning. Driving to all the games, the tournaments, the countless hours of baseball, and all other sports in the yard until after dark sometimes. I'm lucky to have such great parents as role models, and now I can strive to be like you with my kids. Dad, Thanks for raising me to be a good man. And always lead by example. Mom, thanks for showing me what true strength and courage look like. I love you guys. To my brother Sean. I was lucky to have such a great brother to grow up with. We did lots of things together, but whatever it was, we competed. You are a big reason why I'm here today, and I'm happy I'll be able to spend more time with you and your lovely wife, Andrea, that beautiful little girl, Kinsley. I'm so proud of what you have become as a man, husband, and father. I also have a little bit more time to play golf. <laughs> so I'm finally gonna beat you, one time. Watch out. To the fans and so many people in the DC community, thank you for all the support along the way. It was one hell of a ride we went on together. And I can honestly say I wouldn't change a thing. I appreciate the sport on the field, the 100 lost years, and the close to 100 win years. You guys were there. So many of you supported my Zims Foundation off the field. I always thought that showed what type of community we have here. So many of you made time to support a cause that was very, very meaningful to me and most likely didn't affect you at all. But you guys always showed up to my events, and for that I'll ever be grateful. So as I sat down and thought about what it meant and what I wanted to say about having your that was very humbling, and it's one of the highest honors in sports. You think of all your heroes that have had their numbers retired. Players that, have, that you imitated when you played wiffle ball in the backyard. Mine were Cal Ripken Jr. and Chipper Jones. But as I thought more and more, 
I remembered so many stories of all the people that helped me get to this point, many of whom I mentioned previously. I feel like this day, this celebration, is as much for them as it is for me. Nobody who gets their number retired does it on their own. They all had an incredible, incredible support system, and I am no different. When you're playing, you rarely, if ever, take the time to step back and think about accomplishments. Individual or team, as athletes, we are conditioned to take it one day at a time and never get too high or never get too low. You just keep grinding. So, honestly, it's been kind of nice to sit back and remember some of the good times over the last 17 years with so many of my closest friends this week. I hope that all of them and all of you in the stadium and all of you watching on TV, when you look up at that number 11, I hope it gives you the same feeling I get inside. You should, because it's as much yours as it is mine. Aww. The other thought I kept coming back to is how baseball parallels real life. It's one of the many reasons why I think our game is the best in the world. Failure is a huge part of our game, and also a pretty big part of life. But it's not just the failing, it's the learning from your failures and making adjustments. Sometimes for us in between pitches, or in real life, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like getting the carpool pickup time wrong on Monday. <laughs> and being on time on Tuesday. It's a pretty quick adjustment. <laughs> You also have to be a good teammate, day in and day out, even when things aren't going well. I always remember Desi saying one time, it's easy to be a good teammate when you're hitting 300. Try being one when you're hitting 220. So I tried it a couple years. <laughs> it was definitely hard. <laughs> and you obviously need to be a teammate in life as well, especially when you and your family go through tough times, which all of us do. I was blessed to be put in an awesome situation and surrounded by great teammates from the very beginning. So many of the veteran guys taught me how to respect the game, work hard, make good choices, and rep yourself, represent yourself and your organization with class. I took those lessons and used them my entire career, and hopefully did a decent job of passing them along to the next generation of players. Quite simply, so many of the lessons I have learned through the game of baseball have made me the person I am today. And honestly, I think I'm more proud of that than anything I've ever accomplished on the field. So in closing, one of my favorite quotes is, to whom much is given, much is expected. I love this because as a pro baseball player, I had the opportunity to do something every day that people dreamed about doing since they were a kid. I never forgot that. My dad used to say, there's always someone trying to take your job. So I showed up every day and prepared and worked and gave myself the best chances to see because, well, I didn't want anyone to take my job. But honestly, I felt that I owed that type of effort to the game of baseball and maybe more importantly, I owed it to all of you who watch me every day. A lot of you had that same dream about playing Major League Baseball. I got to do that for 17 years, and I never wanted to take that for granted, not even for one day. I didn't succeed all the time, not even close, but I could live with the failures because I knew I prepared and did everything I could to help the team win that day. Some days, the other guy or the other team was just better. I say all this because I think this is what defines my career. Sure, I was a pretty good player. Had some good years, did some cool stuff, did some walk-off homers, won a World Series. But, there's always a but after this. I also got hurt a few times, had to change positions, and honestly, had some pretty mediocre seasons. I think number 11 is up there today because yes, I could play some ball, but more because I brought the right attitude, work ethic, commitment, 
and consistency every single year, day in and day out. And ultimately, I think this is what has earned the respect of everyone in the D.C. area. And to me, that is the greatest accomplishment any athlete can have. I knew, I knew I was given a great opportunity, but I also knew much was expected of me. And it was my honor to try and live up to those expectations for the last 17, 17 years. Thank you.